For a long time, scientists have known about the huge reserves of natural gas located in the shale formations deep beneath much of Pennsylvania and our neighboring states. What's relatively new is the advanced technology that makes accessing those very deep gas reserves possible. The harnessing of these massive reserves has made Pennsylvania a national and world energy leader. It's the role of the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection to oversee and regulate the extraction of these natural gas resources in a safe and environmentally responsible manner. DEP regulates the entire extraction process from the planning and permitting of the well site through the production phase and finally to the proper plugging of the wells when they're no longer in use. Before any type of drilling can occur, well operators must submit all necessary permit applications to DEP for review and approval. The two most common permits reviewed by DEP are the Erosion and Sediment Control General Permit and the Drill and Operate a Well Permit. The Erosion and Sediment Control General Permit authorizes the construction of gas well pads and their associated facilities, such as pipelines and compressor stations. This permit is how DEP ensures the protection of surrounding water resources. In addition, these controls are designed to contain spills that may occur. The pad itself is also large enough to accommodate the necessary vehicles and structures for drilling and fracking the well. The drill and operate a well permit authorizes the construction and operation of the gas well. Most unconventional well sites include multiple gas wells, and operators are required to obtain a drilling permit for each one that's constructed on the pad. Now let's look at how an unconventional well is drilled. When talking about the process of natural gas extraction, many of us have heard the term unconventional drilling. But what does it mean? Unconventional drilling targets deep shale deposits such as the Marcellus and Utica shale formations. Since natural gas is locked in the shale rock, it's not able to flow freely to the surface. Innovative horizontal drilling and high volume hydraulic fracturing are required to break up the shale rock, allowing the natural gas to flow more freely. Fracking has actually been taking place in Pennsylvania for decades. However, horizontal drilling and high volume fracturing has only been in commercial practice here since 2005. The operator begins drilling the well. Unlike a private drinking water well where no laws govern its construction, an unconventional natural gas well must meet tough regulatory standards and be constructed to exacting engineering specifications. A typical unconventional gas well is engineered with multiple layers of metal pipe called casing. These are held in place by several layers of cement that is specially formulated to prevent gas, oil, or brine from impacting fresh groundwater. What makes drilling an unconventional well unique is its horizontal boring. Like most wells, drilling begins vertically into the ground. But as the drill bit approaches the shale formation, the path of the drill bit curves into the horizontal layer of shale rock and continues for as much as a mile. Unlike a simple vertical well bore, this technique allows the drilling rig to effectively capture the natural gas from a much larger area within the shale formation. After an unconventional well is drilled, the rock from the well bore, known as drill cuttings, is typically disposed at a licensed landfill facility. The next step is getting the natural gas out of the shale formation. Since the gas is locked within microscopic pores in the rock, it's necessary to break up the rock in order to free the gas. Hydraulic fracturing involves pumping large volumes of water and hydraulic fracturing fluids deep underground at extremely high pressures to create, then enlarge, small cracks in the shale. It takes about four to six million gallons of water and hydraulic fracturing fluids to accomplish this task. The fracturing fluid also contains sand that serves to hold open the cracks made in the shale rock so the natural gas can flow more freely to the surface. A typical blend of hydraulic fracturing solution contains about 90% water, 9% sand, and 1% of a variety of chemicals to help reduce the friction in the well bore and prevent bacteria from clogging up the pore spaces. Pennsylvania law requires operators to identify each and every chemical contained in their hydraulic fracturing solution and report this information to DEP where it is kept on file. While a lot of water is used in the hydraulic fracturing process, typically about 90% of the fluid that returns to the surface is recycled and reused to hydraulically fracture other wells. 
If the fluid can't be recycled, it's either sent to a licensed wastewater treatment facility or disposed at an approved deep injection well. In Pennsylvania, a typical unconventional natural gas well reaches more than a mile, approximately 5,200 feet, underground. In comparison, a typical private drinking water well is less than 500 feet deep. That distance between groundwater wells and shale rock is equivalent to stacking four Empire State Buildings on top of each other. It takes about three to four weeks to drill a typical unconventional gas well, and only about five to ten days to hydraulically fracture it. After the well is drilled, it's connected to pipelines to transport the natural gas to market for use. The final step in the process requires the operator to restore the site by reducing the size of the well pad and planting grasses and other vegetation to return it to as close to its original condition as possible. During the entire process, DEP staff regularly inspect the site to ensure that all environmental laws and regulations are met. Given the enormous amount of natural gas reserves that are available in the Marcellus Shale alone, unconventional drilling is likely to continue for many years to come. DEP is committed to its mission of protecting Pennsylvania's land, air, and water resources, and ensuring that our natural gas reserves are recovered in a way that protects our citizens and our environment.